name is Sik and good morning Vietnam. <laughs> we have loaded up the new DLC called SOG Prairie Fire, I think. At least it's called Prairie Fire something. And with it comes a whole new map based on Vietnam. Of course, this is the Vietnam War, but look at the size of this map. It is absolutely crazy. It is really, really big. Now, this video will be the first video on making a whole mission that I've done in ages. Because to be fair, or to be honest, I haven't touched Arma 3, or at least the editor, in ages. I did a little video uh, a little while ago, a couple of months probably, but it was rather limited and small in scope. But with this new DLC, I am feeling inspired to make a whole new mission. And so I had this idea in my mind of having the air cavalry come on in with helicopters and land in this area over here in the rice paddies because it is so uh, typical, I guess, or it is it's this typical image that I have of the Vietnam War is you have these rice paddies and you have these small villages. So. This is something that I think is really cool and that is what I want to do here. So what I want to do is I want to have a bunch of VC maybe or maybe even uh, what are they called again? Arvin? Is that the uh, friendlies or is that the end? Pavan? Not sure. I, but these are under the up for anyway. So I guess it's Pavan. Yeah, so we're going to have a bunch of these guys patrolling around this area. We are going to move in with helicopters as a engagement. So basically we're just going to come in under fire. We're going to be firing as we come in, we're going to land, and then we're going to have to push through. I saw this little group of houses over here, which could be an objective to clear once you establish your LZ. And then we have over here another little uh, checkpoint. That could be a small objective to clear. And then finally, in the back here, we have this massive base that we might also want to clear. Now, in this mission, I am actually going to be using an AI mod called LAMB. And LAMB seems really promising. It does seem really to change some things around without really breaking the waypoints. So I'm quite happy in trying that out and, and see how much more survivable the AI becomes. But anyway, enough talking, it is time to start. So we are going to go under MACV, and in there we have helicopters belonging to the US Army. And I had a little bit of a search before we started this, and if I remember correctly, it is the Iroquois Slick Army or AirCAF. Basically, you have Army and AirCAF. Uh, this one should be able to hold a whole stick of infantry. On top of that, we have these door gunners, which is super cool. Now, um, these guys, I might actually want to remove from the group. And the reason for that is actually quite simple. So now we have Alpha 1, Alpha 2, we have the crew chief, door gunner. This is a crew chief, okay. And we have the pilots and the co-pilot. Now, the reason that these are separate is because I want to make the pilots careless so that they ignore combat, that they don't get scared, that they're not going to run away. But if I do that for the whole air or the whole helicopter, it also applies to these guys. And that means that these guys will never use their guns. And that would be terrible because that would just be illogical. So by making these guys uh, immune to fear, these guys will still be able to shoot and do their thing. So anyway, um, yeah, this guy is of course going to go up into the sky a little bit. We're going to open him up and we are going to call him a heli one. Now in this, we are going to set some parameters. We will say, uh, this allow damage false. 
that means this helicopter cannot take damage so it's not going to get shot out of the sky before we have a chance to disembark and we will say this um, of being false and we also have the Eden enhanced editor um, yeah a mod installed and it gives us a bunch of extra things here in the editor so we could also say enable damage false here um, yeah as a presence maybe somewhere in here is actually a way to make them uh, register as lamps artillery all right so that is new that belongs to the AI mod no anyway we're going to ignore that for now then I guess because I kind of lost my train of thought I got distracted by the little thing what I wanted to do is set these guys to careless, but I will just have to do it through a waypoint, which is fine. Now, we are going to need some infantry. So, under MACV again, we are going to go to men and US Army, I guess. Is there a air units, air army? No. Okay, so that's just, these are just air units, that makes sense. So I guess on the US Army, we have tunnel rats, vehicle crew, rifle squad, second rifle squad, first rifle platoon, but we are going to put a rifle squad. Uh, let's see, I don't know exactly how many men this is going to be. And I don't know why they're on the water, which is kind of interesting, but we are going to take these guys and if I remember correctly, we can just drag them up to the helicopter, let go. And now all of them are put inside the helicopter, which is great because that's exactly what we want. Now, one of these guys is going to be the player. So let's see, we have this squad leader over here. I don't want them to be a squad leader, but we have a rifleman on this side. And we also have, let's see, a machine gunner on the side. That could be cool. And we have another rifleman on the side. So it really it depends on which side we are going to want the player to face. But on the angle, I guess we're going to come flying in over here and land somewhere over here. So if we are on the left side of the helicopter, that would be ideal. Of course, we don't want to be the pilot. So we are going to become rifleman number two over here. All right, so we are going to need a place to land. And under props, we will be able to find the helipads. I pressed enter, that brought us into the game. It actually did show me an error message and that was, contain that was pertaining this uh, little script that we wrote here. And this said false before, that was incorrect. It needs to be zero. So, uh, let's see, helipad. Somewhere in here has to be the helipad. Bunker, outpost, that's interesting. Why did that disappear? Has to be here somewhere. Ah, it's on the group. That makes sense. So, take notes. <laughs> Do not look for the helipad on the group. Don't learn it the hard way. And we are going to be looking for an invisible helipad. Actually, this is MACV, but that doesn't really matter. These are Vietnam specific, I guess, but we will take the invisible one. And let's see, we need a nice open space. Right there will do. We are going to call it pad one. All right. Now on the waypoints, we are going to give this pilot uh, a waypoint. What is this? Artillery barrage. Interesting. That is new to the DLC as well. Uh, we are going to give him a transport unload uh, thing. And then we are going to give him a move waypoint, which I think would be ideal if we moved it over here. We are going to move them over here, here, here and then we are going to move them off into the distance really far away 
so that we won't see them anymore and later through a trigger we can destroy that helicopter or actually just delete it from existence which is even better because then it is not simulated anymore and it makes everything a little bit easier on the mission itself now as for the troops we have here a squad leader i guess this guy is in charge so he is going to get a waypoint that says get out and we're going to place that one right there and then he can do a move waypoint over here i guess now these things these two waypoints need to be synced up and actually i did do a video on this whole process of landing on the fire before but we're just going to go through the whole process again so we're going to go right click connect set waypoint activation and click on the transport unload all right hopefully this guy is high enough to clear the treetops and it doesn't actually seem like he is so we might just draw him up just a little bit more and we can do a little test all right so we are on the left hand side we have this machine gunner over here we are going to speed up time let's see by four we have the get out waypoints this guys are landing we are getting out All right, and off he goes. Perfect, that is what we want. Now, we do need to change this waypoint actually to this one, transport unload. We need to say his behavior needs to be careless, right? Because if he's not careless, then he is going to go into a combat mode and when he is in combat mode he will ignore his order and he will do whatever allows him to survive now um if i'm correct actually we should also make sure that this says this allow damage false and we can actually copy that and put it on the helicopter pilot, other uh, the co-pilot or and the main pilot. Both of them should be unkillable because otherwise they might just die to a lucky shot, and the game will uh, let them crash, which is what we don't want. Now we are going to test this landing under fire by having some Viet Cong over here. Or actually, we could try the Pavan men Marines. Huh. Wait, oh, that's interesting. I'm not too familiar with all the groups, but let's have a look. Okay, so these guys do look like official military units. They have a uniform and everything. It is one ungodly looking ugly uniform, but that lets us know who we don't want. We'll get the NVA. Here's a shortcut, a short term thingy that I am familiar with. So anyway. Um, we will put a rifle squad and we are going to put it down over here now let's see what this does shall we oh actually let us make sure that the player also cannot die uh, at least until he has landed this allow damage false actually i just remember now i copied that i didn't need to type it but oh well here we go let's see what the door gunners do And I guess number 12 in the stick is actually not in the helicopter. He is somewhere in the sea, maybe. I didn't see him, but maybe because the sea is very deep. Alright, these guys... There we go. Now we got some contact. And he also goes into firing mode. That is fantastic.
All right, I'm getting some FPS problems, which is super annoying. Why are you shooting? He cannot get the angle, but he just keeps firing anyway. Anyway, the helicopter is landing. We are getting out, but we actually do have some cover on the low ground here, which is super cool. I kind of already like this. But of course, we are not going to continue all the way. But at least we know that this works. Now, what I kind of want to do is I want to turn this into a larger scale offensive. So we are not just going to do this for one group of helicopters. We are going to do this for several helicopters. So I'm just going to go through this whole process. I think we can simplify it quite a bit. By simply dragging this, doing Control C, and then Control V. Interesting. Okay, so I guess there is one guy too many, and there are some. Oh yeah, there they are. <laughs> that is very, very strange. These guys are going to disappear. And we're just going to go through this process again, except, of course, we are going to have to rename this. Actually, we could use this name as well, but it's not very accurate and it's just more confusing. So we're just going to drag this over to a direction we want it to be. So we could actually find a place actually where there's not too many trees. We could drag it over onto this little field over here. These guys have their waypoints, but of course they don't have any further waypoints. So after these guys get out, they are going to have to move somewhere as well. So they're going to move over here in the transport unload. After this, we'll uh, not follow the other guy exactly. I guess he will go this way, that way, uh, that way, a little bit sooner than the other guy and he's going to move away. Now the benefit of this is of course that we don't have to uh, rename or uh, repeat all of these codes because they're already there, but this is of course going to be Heli 2. We don't need to change this because it just says this, so it just applies to the unit that the code is in. So that is really, really good. And these guys are going to come from over here. Now we're going to skip intros and stuff for that until we know this all is going to be working fine. Yeah, we're just going to have some patrol walking through this area. And I guess this one patrol actually will be enough. So we're just going to give this guy a waypoint over here. And let's see. They're not, they shouldn't be too far away from the buildings, I guess. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them a waypoint here, there there and then we are going to give them a cycle waypoint because cycling basically says that he's going to go back to this waypoint and continue the route that makes the patrol permanent uh, when we open up this we are going to set their behavior for now to safe that is actually one that can change as soon as they see an enemy they're going to go into combat mode but when they feel safe, they're going to have their weapons down, they're going to be in uh, slow speed for right now, and they're going to do a staggered column so that they can follow the road a little bit better. And then we have one patrol. Uh, we could do more, of course. Uh, but I'm not sure if I want to do too many over in this area because I want the players to be moving towards that area. And they're going to have an objective here. They're going to have an objective here, maybe, so that we also have to move through the forest. We have some extra trees and stuff that will be okay to uh, to deal with. Um, this one. And then finally, that one. But for now, I guess, well, we need to make sure that we establish uh, an LZ. So what we are going to need is we are going to need a trigger. And we are going to place one right about there. And that's a nice big area that is absolutely sufficient 
when opening it up, this is going to be uh, objective one, so OBJ, OBJ one. The activation is going to be up for not present. And then on activation, well, we can actually uh, make this whole radio conversation. So what we can do is SL1 side chat HQ. This is uh, we, we're going to need a name. If you guys know of a name, let me know in the comments below. We're just going to call it platoon one for now. LC secured over. All right. That is going to be nice. And then we need a trigger without a radius. And we're going to place that one right next to it. And we're going to call this OBJ1A. Because it is going to belong to a string of triggers belonging to the first objective. We're going to have HQ side chat. Uh, Roger that button one. Continue to the next objective out all right now for the condition this is going to say trigger activated obj1 and finally we are going to set a timer value of about five seconds and we need to do that in all three sections here this is the minimum time the trigger has to wait before going into effect after uh, objective one gets triggered this is the middle and this is the max so basically the middle can be a random value between this number and whatever this number will be so if you say that this is five and this is 15 middle could end up being 10 or you could specify it and it's going to be kind of random as to when it turns out but by putting five in all three of these uh, areas we can make sure that this mes message will play exactly after five seconds or five seconds after the first trigger activates. Now, of course, in order to, to have these uh, chats actually show up with a name, we are going to have to, we're going to make some units over here. Let's see, not under uh, props, of course. And also, we're not going to have a West German unit. So we're going to go to MACV, US Army. We're going to pick something random, I guess. I, I will we'll put an officer. Now, these guys will not be involved in the combat. We will put them somewhere where we will never be. And we're going to put one over here. We're going to put one over there. And we can add to these guys as we need. But this guy is going to be HQ. And what was the other guy that we called in the trigger? The first trigger, SL1. Right. So this guy is going to be called SL1. And in it, we are going to need a small little script that I actually forgot. So I'm going to have to look it up because it's been so long. All right. So I found it online. I just copied and, and uh, or copied it and now I can uh, paste it. We are going to uh, change player to say this because it's going to apply to this specific unit. And then we are going to call this uh, Sergeant John or whatever. If you have a name, let me know in the comments. <laughs> All right. Johnson, Sergeant Johnson. Why not? Because that's more like a last name, right? And then this guy is going to have the same thing, except this is going to, of course, say this and then set name. headquarters and then that's the name that's going to show up in the radio message in the bottom left once these triggers start playing these guys are safe they will never die so we don't need to worry about them but you can just leave them in that area over there all right um, as for objectives we are going to go into systems and bear with me because it has been a while since I actually set up my whole mission Fairly sure I still know what to do, but yeah, bear with me here. Uh, I think it's under Intel. 
uh, there is the create task indeed and we can place it anywhere I guess we'll place it over here you can open it up we will say uh, task one let's see the owner is going to be uh, all playable units I guess or basically if you wanted to do a multiplayer scenario where you have an enemy team and a buffer team that are both playable by players then you would not want to have this because then that means this object or this uh, task will be visible in the briefing for both sides and then you would say blue four or up four but if i say blue four over here that's going to be fine uh, task id uh, beach parent task id beach not sure what these do or how important they are so, uh, the title will be secure the lz and then we can do a description and that's going to show up in the briefing as well so the first objective is to secure the lz at Badia. I just had to look at the name right here. <laughs> um, the state is going to be created and it is going to be always visible. Task type, we can also change that so we can do attack. So it's going to have a different marker. Uh, module position as the destination, we can also disable that or we can synchronize it to an object but it's going to be at the model pos module position. And we can also uh, put a marker and we will call that LZ, uh, mark LZ, why not? Now, of course, that does mean we are going to have to place a marker. So we can choose any one of these. We will choose that one, I guess. We'll place it there and then in the variable name it's going to be mark lz not sure if this automatically makes it so that we um, can click it and it will automatically focus on that because that is actually new to me as well anyway once this task is created we are going to actually i'm going to drag it over here a little bit and the reason for that is uh, the following we are going to go back into systems and we are going to have a set task state module and I, I like to organize things in a very visual way. And this one is going to have to get synced to one of these triggers. So I would like this to be close, closer to the trigger that I'm going to use than this one. Uh, we can right click, say connect, sync to the task state. And the task state, we are going to connect sync to uh, trigger objective one. So as soon as this LZ gets secured, that should set this task to being completed. And it really shouldn't be that much more difficult. We could do also, of course, the set task destination. Uh, headquarters entity is new to me, but that's interesting. We can do diary records, uh, which are going to show up in the briefing, but not as tasks. So you can create a little story there. Now, and if we, let's see, in single player, I don't think we will sh uh, have this show up with the briefing if i remember correctly there was a way to do it play play in single player or play in a single player with briefing there we go yeah all right so task secure the lz assign or we can also make sure that's assigned by default actually and I, I do see it doesn't link to the marker automatically so that is something we can change. And actually the, mo the, marker is, or the module is now over here. So maybe that's also what, what changed. So if we cancel out of this, actually I can just do it a little bit differently. If I really wanted this to be over here, uh, I could set task destination over here. We can sync this up to the objective. And of course we could also do another set task state and it is going to be assigned 
And for that, we are not going to have anything. Uh, no trigger to have it. So it's just going to be assigned by default. And of course, this set task state, actually, before I forget, we need to open it up and we need to say succeeded because otherwise it's still not going to check off. All right. So now if we play and we go to SP, SP with briefing. Huh. Destination is a little bit different. That's interesting. So we created a little problem for ourselves, I guess. But we have a task. By now it is actually assigned automatically. And as soon as everyone is dead over here, when we start, uh, it should tick off. We're not going to try it out though, for now. Uh, actually, I think uh, just as with the community project videos that I did before, we are going to cut this up into several pieces uh, instead of like one super long, very large video, which is also a possibility, of course, but I don't think that is a very good idea. So I think we're going to leave it at this for now. Please do leave a like and a comment below if you enjoyed this content and wish to see more. It does really mean a lot to me. It does motivate me to keep going. So please do. <laughs> and then I will see you guys for the video I do next.